Hey, aloha my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Today I want to touch very briefly on an aspect of bed leveling that is often not discussed. For a primer in, in manual bed leveling, I'm going to point you over to a video from Angus Makers Muse. And there'll be a link up here. He covers in his video multiple aspects and multiple types of printers and the mechanical leveling processes for those printers. Instead, what I want to briefly discuss is the thermal expansion and contraction of the hot end and the heat bed that often occurs and that people don't consider when bed leveling. Now, anything I'm going to say today uh, is obviously superseded by your manufacturer's recommendations for how to level their printers. Uh, for example, the CME C and C deltas want you to level their printers and run the calibration process with a cold nozzle and a cold bed plate and do it at ambient temperatures. However, other printers that have a heater, a free floating heater such as a, a Prusa I3 style, either the clones or the Mark II or many of the others, you will find that just like the plastic flowing through them that changes properties as it gets hot, your bed is also going to tend to warp and bow and your hot end itself will expand and contract as it gets hot. So it makes sense that you want to factor that into your bed leveling. I challenge each of you, if you have a printer that this is valid for, to run a bed leveling routine uh, using your paper and adjusting it at room temperature and then heating up your nozzle to, say, PLA temps, uh, let's say 185 on the nozzle and 50 on the bed, or 55 on the bed, and run it again. And you'll often find, depending on the physical structure of the printer, that either you now have a larger gap or you have a tighter gap and your nozzle is now digging into the bed once it's heated. Now, I caution you to be careful if you have a surface like Biltac rather than glass or some sort of other surface that could be damaged by that hot nozzle, you may not want to try this. Or you may want to try it on a sheet that is old and is going to be replaced and thrown away. What you can do is once you've done it a few times, you can learn the deviation between leveling with a cold plate and a hot plate. For example, on my DI3, I've learned that I typically have a 0.1 millimeter deviation between cold and hot. And most firmwares, or even in the slicers themselves, allow you to make offset adjustments so that you can either raise or lower your starting point beyond what the firmware thinks is zero, where the end stop is hitting. So it's worth factoring that in and giving that a look as you do your bed leveling. OK, well, that's it for today. Please be sure to leave comments below or find me on social media and let me know what works best for you as far as bed leveling. We all learn from each other's feedback, so a comment that you leave might help out somebody else with a similar printer or a similar setup as you. Um, if you like what we're doing on the channel here and you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, feel free to give me a thumbs down, but please, I implore you to leave me a comment and let me know what you didn't like so we can work on fixing that for next time. With that, I wish everyone a good day. Aloha.